everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Tonight I am going to show you a really cool Cricut Infusible ink trick that makes these pens or markers look like watercolor techniques on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So one of the really cool things I've discovered is that we can do extra things with the ink in these markers and pens. For example, I made a coaster yesterday and I want to show you. So this here is a coaster that I made with the Cricut Infusible ink pens. So I didn't just, you know, like draw them on. I actually used watercolor brushes and I used these to create this really cool effect. And I think it turned out really, really neat. It's actually even more vibrant than you can see here. Uh, because I have a lot of lights in the room so that we can see everything, uh, but it's actually really quite vibrant, even more so than it when I first transferred it. And I want to show you how to do this technique because if you want to play with these infusible ink pens or markers, you can either do either one, either the markers or the pens for this. It's really cool and you get this lovely watercolor technique, okay? What's also cool about this is that you don't actually need a Cricut to do this. You just need your markers or pens and um, paintbrush and your laser copy paper that we're going to put our design on and a heat press or an easy press to transfer it to your coaster or your tote bag or whatever it is that you want. Okay. So I think this is going to be cool. So let's head on over to the work area and let me show you how this works. All right. Awesome. So this is what I made yesterday. And as you can see, it's basically some watercolor flowers and little flowers around the outside. Now I got to tell you guys, I am not a watercolor artist. I don't really consider myself an artist at all. I think of myself as a designer, uh, but somehow I still managed to do this. So don't be intimidated by using a paintbrush because watercolors are actually pretty forgiving. And I noticed that even though there were some imperfections on my original design, when I transferred it to the coaster, like it, it looked better. It looked better than what I originally had. Okay, so let me show you how this works. So we're gonna start with our piece of laser copy paper. Let me move these things over here. So again, I am using this Hammer Mill Premium Laser Print Paper. All right, so you can use any kind of paper so long as it's laser and it's white, like copy paper, okay? Um, not inkjet paper, not watercolor paper, because as cool as that would be, you need a paper where your infusible ink is going to sit on the surface and not want to soak in, okay? So that is important. All right, and I am going to be putting this on my last coaster, because see, I've done three of the four coasters that Cricut sent me. So this will be our last one. Okay, so what I recommend that you do is make yourself a template. You could, of course, cut out a circle on your Cricut if you wanted, but we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way. Take out a marker, and we're just going to draw a circle around our coaster so we know what size, because you don't want to just sort of freehand it and hope that you're getting it. It's going to be roughly where you need it, because that will not work. <laughs> You actually want to know the size of your coaster, and then we're going to cut this out. So we know where where to put our design so that we're not um, going outside of it. And when we cut this, we want to cut inside the lines like this. So that, because when we drew this template, right, there was plenty of space around the edge, so we want to make sure we're coming in Oh, I don't know, like maybe somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. And then we know that our design is going to fit inside this coaster. Of course, if you want to go to the edge, that would be different, but we don't want that today. All right, so here is our template. And this is what we're going to do watercolor with our markers, okay? And if you guys have any questions while I'm doing this, just ask. I can see your comments. And I'm always happy to answer questions about how this, anything that we're doing works. Uh, so again, I'm using the Cricut Infusible Ink Basic Pen Set because this is what I have. But you could use the markers 
and you can use the other colors. The other color set that Cricut has right now is the neon set. And that's got more, it's got like a, it's got another pink and it's got yellow and it's got like a light blue. It's got like a brighter colors in it. All right, so we're going to start by using the empty box that our coasters came in. Okay, so this, I've used all my coasters, right? And so all we have left is this plastic tray, which is perfect for what we're going to do tonight. All right, so we're gonna start by just taking off the cap and we're going to actually put some ink in here by literally just scribbling. Okay, so I'm just, it's like I'm writing on the inside of this plastic, plastic um, dish essentially is what it's like. We're gonna use, basically we're using this as our palette, palette bowl, palette plate. I don't know what the, the, the technical word for that is. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I'm just putting a bunch of, of the green infusible ink in here like that, okay? And then we're gonna take a, uh, this is a watercolor brush. I got this really cool pack of them. What did I do with them? Oh, here they are. I got these on Amazon. They were not expensive and it was like a whole, like a range of brushes. But you can also just use, you know, just as long as, you know, you're going to want a good brush that's going to, you know, not, not probably not too broad, like a round tip brush is going to work better for this. But I have these two because I think that this is the two sizes I think will work best for our project. And then we need some water because this is watercolor technique, right? So we're just getting a little bit of water, not a lot, just a little bit. Just kind of brush it off on the side. And then we put the water the wet, the wet brush into our ink like this. And you can see, right, that we now have essentially watercolor ink. <laughs> That's what we have. We have added just a little bit of water to this ink. And I know there's not a lot here, guys, but I will show you how you can get more. All right, so let's move this here. And then we have our design. So I'm just gonna draw the stem of a flower. There. Right? Isn't that cool? So that's not something that the point of our pens or our brushes are going to make, right? This is so cool. So we can have these cool brush effects. So let me do another stem and then I will show you how we can get some more ink out of, out of our pen. Okay. So, so I'm going to actually show you how you can get the ink cartridge out so you can get a little more ink if you wanna do this, okay? So we're gonna use a craft knife, so always be careful when you use a knife. And I'm gonna just kind of press it into the tip there. So you see I pressed it into there and I'm gonna wiggle it like this until it basically just pops off like this. Let's get a little bit more. There, okay. End of this just pops right off, okay? And then inside is there we go. This is our, uh, the, the ink cartridge. If you guys want to see it, it's what it looks like. So pretty standard. As far as I know, I guess I don't really look at this often, but this looks like other markers I've seen. So what we can do is go back to our little makeshift palette and we can put, we can squeeze a little bit out so that we have more. So hopefully you can see me do this and my fingers aren't in the way. Kind of do it like this. You guys see that? Here we go, this is better. So I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of the ink out. There we go, that was actually quite a bit. So we have lots more ink now. So you could do a much bigger design with this and you can put the, the, the cap right back on. It doesn't hurt the pen, your pen will continue to work. I know it's hard to see, but there's definitely still green ink coming out there. You guys kind of see that? Yep. So it's kind of hard because this is a green mat too. So now we have all of this lovely ink. You're going to want more water for this much ink, right? In fact, let's just switch to the bigger brush. So I'm dipping my brush in water and that's actually a lot of ink. I'm going to kind of bring some over to the side like this. So we have a little bit. There we go. That looks really good to me. You can make some really amazing designs with this. All right, so 
Again, I am not a watercolor artist, guys. So <laughs> I'm sure many of you are or are more talented at this than I am. I am just having fun with this. So let's see, we could, uh, this is really thick. I think it's gonna be, we can always test it. Let's test it first and see how it looks. So let's try making a leaf. That looks fine, let's make a leaf then. So there's one leaf and there's another. That looks nice, doesn't it? And then of course, I mean, like the one I did this, I just kind of like smeared some of the ink across the bottom like this. Cause I really like that kind of like cool gradiated water color look. I think it's very pretty. That's all I did. <laughs> that was it. Okay. So that's green. So let me show you a couple other colors. And so Debbie asks, can you combine the colors to get more colors? Yeah, you absolutely can. Because I, when I did this one, so I combined, can you see this pink one here? So this is a combination of the purple and the pink, and then it was really light. So it's like a different color pink. And this one down here is a combination of the purple and the green. The problem, of course, is that I am limited to pink and purple and green, and we're not going to mix brown with anything, guys. <laughs> That's just going to turn into like dirt color. So it's fine if you want to, but... Yeah, it doesn't really work all that well. So let's get out a pink color and make a flower. But you don't definitely can mix the colors because I was able to do that before. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some pink in here. The pink shows up a lot better on the um, our little makeshift palette. And it's totally sufficient for the little project we're doing. You can of course get more ink out if you want. But I don't think we need that right now. So let me get some water on this. Wash off my brush. So there we go. You guys see that? So now we have a uh, pink watercolor infusible ink. Set that there. Go back to our picture and I will make a, I will attempt, attempt to make a tulip. So here is one petal and here is another. So clearly that's a, a little tulip. We can also make, let's see, we could switch to the other brush and because it's really quite a bit bigger, probably twice as big in fact, I'd say. I don't wanna add any more water. So, and we could make more like a daisy like this. Again, I'm not a watercolor artist, guys. So, <laughs> but the cool thing is that like, it still turned out great even though I'm not, right? And it's, it's, watercolors are often just casual like this anyway. So it's not like, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, how about some purple? Let's do some purple now. Do you guys have any questions? Are this, is, is this an interesting technique? I'm not sure if I'm seeing everyone's comments. It looks like maybe they're stuck or something. The last comment I see is from Sarah that's saying, that's a great question, Debbie. So I'm not sure if you guys are just really quiet tonight or if uh, the comments aren't coming through. Okay, so say something. Let me know how you're doing tonight so I can see if our comments are working. So I'm gonna put in some purple and I'll put it in here next to the pink because then we can um, try combining them. I mean, pink and purple are kind of close, so we're not gonna see a major difference, but you might see a little bit of one. Okay, so there's some purple. I like just like writing them out with this um, because we're doing such a small project, it works totally fine for that. All right, so let me get my smaller brush. Just a little bit of water on it. Make sure you guys can see that. Just a little bit of water. Mixing it in with the ink that's on the plastic. Because the, the plastic is non-soluble, so the ink can't soak into it. And the water helps it stay wet enough for us to play with. Okay. So let's put a little center in our daisy. Remember it's watercolor, so if you have too much water, you're gonna get like, you know, a lot on your, your little paper that you might not want. And let's do, let's see, we need another flower. What would be a good flower? Um, maybe a rose. I can try making a rose. 
So make the top of the rose and then the petals. So I'm just kind of making a little swirly shape here and then coming down here to do this shape. It's kind of a rose. It kind of looks like a rose, right? All right, so then we just need some more green, I think. So I think I'm not saying comments because people would have definitely said hi. So I don't know, maybe you could try closing that comment window and opening it, maybe it'll refresh it. Okay, so let's do another stem. And I'm gonna get my one, I remember we already have ink in this green, so we just we don't need to you know put a lot of um, water into it again because if you add more water to it it's just going to get really runny you know you might definitely want to practice before you just start you know making your masterpiece which is what I did I practiced first and then we'll add a stem to this rose and let's see what a rose's leaves look like they're kind of like they kind of like this I think There we go. And I'm gonna fill that in a little darker since I want it to match. Make the grass here just a little darker. Maybe give the leaves a little line on them. There, doesn't that look cool guys? All right, so um, now remember if you were to put words or anything on this, they would need to be backwards right because when we go to put this on our coaster we're going to flip it over so don't forget that any infusible ink project you do has to be done in mirror now i'm not very good at signing my name backwards so i'm not going to attempt it but maybe you're good at it let's see and i could also do like the little vines around the edges too i mean why not we have tons of green here right so just it was just kind of like something like this around the edges I actually did the flowers first, but it took a while, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bore you guys with all of my little various flowers. I think that you get the idea here of what we're trying to do. <clears throat> hey Greg, can you check Slack to see if there's anything any people have questions that I need to answer? Because um Sarah could put them into Slack for us and then I can still answer them since we can't see the comments. Sorry guys, I'm sorry I can't see your comments for whatever reason. Let's add some leaves to this. It's getting a little leaves. So it'll just be kind of a vine around the edge. So, I mean, really you can do whatever you want here, you know? I mean, what's really cool is that it's a very delicate, fun effect and when you put it onto your coaster or your t-shirt or your tote bag or whatever you're planning to do with this, um, it's going to be permanent. So even though it looks so delicate and like you could just wash it away, you're not gonna be able to, which I think is really cool. I think that is awesome. All right, so a few more leaves. It's hardly the, my best work, guys, but I know that you're getting the idea of what I'm trying to do here. <clears throat> Um, and of course, for those of you who are watching, we're recording this on June 7, 19th. To, yeah, today's June 19th. And the Infusible Ink products actually come out in the Michael stores on Friday, June 21st. So we will be there in the morning so that we can go get some more goodies to play with. Um, I did place an order on Michael's um, Michael's online because you can already order there, but I don't think that my order is going to arrive until after um, the store. The store has some, so so I want to go to the store and see what they have there. All right, there we go. So there is our watercolor design. Hopefully, you could see that we could, of course, do more than this. <clears throat> There's all sorts of things that you could do. Again, I'm not really an artist, so. I just thought well, the little flowers would look good on the coasters and then I'm going to, this one is basically made to match this one. So I have a set. All right. So, uh, yeah, so I guess that we should go ahead and create a, um, okay. So I was just looking at a message from someone. So, 
Uh, Sarah and Grandy, if you can hear me, we can't see mess we can't see comments at all. So if you could put them into Slack, then we can try to answer them. And we can bring Slack up on this computer. So give me just a second, guys, so I can see what we're doing. I'm gonna use the controls for a second, Greg. And then I can see if you guys have questions and I can answer them. So and I will put them into um Social media, we will have them in social media. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, just talking to my awesome team. So um, I, I'm not, I see Grandy here and I see Sarah here. And maybe Miranda is here as well. So these guys are awesome. And then we have Greg who is sitting right over here and he's controlling everything about the video to make sure that um, it's all working right and everything like that. Oh yes, comments might be working again. Debbie says, could you write your name or trace something on the other side to see it through the paper to write it backwards? Yeah, you totally could. Um, I'm not gonna do it though because I think this might still be a tiny bit wet. I don't wanna smudge anything. But yes, that is a great idea, Debbie. You could write something on the back. You probably would wanna put it in like pencil, not any ink because anything, any kind of ink could transfer to your project, right? Or you could maybe put it onto another piece of paper like this. And let's see here. Is this a point for tip? Yes. So I could put, you know, Jennifer like this. I don't know if this is gonna be dark enough for us to see, but maybe so. And then we could put it, I'm gonna get another piece of paper. I don't wanna mess up my mat. I'm always messing up my mat and having to get another mat. So, so. If you like, it's kind of faint. I don't know that I could see it. I can kind of see it, but not very well. So you might want to use a light box. You could totally use a light box. Um, I don't think my light box is plugged in, but if you've got um, like a bright pad, you could put it underneath and then you could see your name and you could trace it. So that is a great idea, Debbie. That would be very cool. Someone suggested I add a butterfly. That's a good idea. Um, forgive me if my butterfly doesn't come out great. We'll give it a try. It's a butterfly profile maybe. Okay, so I'm gonna get some purple. And let's see. Let's see, what does a butterfly look like? I guess it has like a little body. <laughs> and then it has um, a big wing, right? And then it has a little wing. Yeah, that's maybe not the best butterfly. Hopefully you guys know what that is though. <laughs> Maybe if it was bigger, it would look better. But there, there's a butterfly. We'll put one on the other side so that they we kind of like are balanced. So wings. I think I might need a little bit more water maybe. Or ink. Let's see. So put a wing here and a wing here. And then two little bits at the bottom. You guys get the idea. And then give it a little head. There. That looks like a butterfly. Right? You guys get the you guys get the idea. Okay. So would you like to see me put this onto a coaster? I've got one coaster left. We can totally do that. I've got everything I need here. I have my um I have my easy press right here. <coughs> So let me double check my directions for coasters. I want to make sure I get the temperature correct. So I'm going to just look at my, uh, so Cricut has a heat press guide, which will always tell you what you need for the, the Cricut Easy Press that you have and for the material you're using and everything. So I'm using the Cricut Easy Press 2 and we're using the infusible pen marker and we're using the ceramic coaster. All right, so it says to do it for 400 degrees for 240 seconds. All right, so let's turn this on. 400 degrees for 240 seconds. So that looks perfect because I did one yesterday. So it's already set. So let's let that warm up and I will check to see if there's any more questions. Um, okay, so I see a question here. Can you use a heat press other than Cricut for this process? If so, how? So yes, you can use heat presses so long as the heat press can get to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You could totally do that. I don't have a heat press, 
But so I can't show you how that works, but it's the same way that you would normally use a heat press. You do, you know, you, you just, if it's 400 degrees, like this easy press is, it's going to be for 240 seconds as well. So it's the same, the same deal. Um, yeah. And I'm looking to see if there's any more questions that have come through here. Um, Elizabeth says, can we use any ceramic coaster? You know, I'm not sure, Elizabeth, if we can or not, because I only have these to test with and I'm not testing with anything but what Cricut sent me um, now. Next week, I'm going to do a video where we try different things. So I will try to get a hold of some uh, other ceramic coasters to see what happens. Okay, so we can test those. Alexandria says, can you use an iron to make them? So I haven't tested an iron, but Cricut says no. Cricut says they don't get hot enough or stay consistently hot enough. Also, there's a problem with the, the surface of the iron has like little holes in it usually for steam that can cause an issue. You might have a design with little holes on it. And also um, the base plate of the iron is only about this big. So that might be okay for some projects, but it's not going to be okay for like a big t-shirt because you can't move it around. You need to put, you know, you need your, your design has to be on the whole thing. All right. So let's, this is heated up. So we need our mat. And, uh, let me, okay. So we got, let me move these things around. So this is our design. Okay. So we've got our mat. We need to clean our coaster with a lint-free cloth. So I'm just going to use my lens cloth for my camera to clean that because that is a lint-free cloth. All right. And then we need to tape our design to the coaster. Okay. So we're just going to put that on here just like this. And it fits because we used our coaster as a template. I'm going to get some tape. So this is the Cricut heat resistant tape. Um, that they sell for doing the infusible ink projects. Uh, and they sent me a roll in my little kit that I got last week. So I found that we really only need to tape it into spots just right across from each other and that works fine. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape right here. Now make sure that your design is face down on the shiny side of the coaster. Okay. So we've got it there and then you want to pull this. So it's, you know, tight across your coaster and tape the other side so that it does not move. We don't want it to move. Okay. So the design is on there and it's not going anywhere. Okay. So next we need a piece of cardstock to protect our mat. Otherwise we might end up transferring some of the design to the mat and that would be a bummer. I have done that with a t-shirt before. Okay, so this is 80 pound white cardstock. Use white because you don't want any colors transferring to your project. And then we put our coaster face down. Okay, face down so that we can see the unglazed part on the back. And then we cover the back with butcher paper. It's kind of a scrap paper here. Okay, so the butcher paper should be the same size as your easy press. That's important when you do that. Let me just double check my directions to make sure I'm not missing anything. So 400 degrees for 240 seconds, and we have our mat, and then we have our paper, and then our design, and our coaster, and our butcher paper, and then our um, easy press. So we're gonna do this for 240 seconds. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just place it straight down on the coaster, just like this, press the start button and it's going to go down and this is no pressure. You do not hit, you should not be holding it down or pressing it down or anything like that. Okay. So let me ans answer some questions while we're waiting. So Elizabeth says, how about trying, oops, I missed that one. It scrolled up, but I think she said, how about trying some ceramic, I need to go find that. How about trying ceramic tiles along with other coasters? So Jeannie says Cricut said no to tiles. So I haven't tried anything but what Cricut sent me, guys. Um, except for I did did try the back of a t-shirt just because I only had one t-shirt to try. So and that worked fine. Um, so I don't know the answer without trying it myself. But the tiles are tiles are different. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to use anything other 
than Cricut's ceramic blanks. They have round ones and they have square ones. But I am happy to experiment. You guys know that I love that. I love to experiment and find out. The thing is, though, is that I think that you're going to have a lot of variable results when you start using non-Cricut blanks. So sometimes it might work great and sometimes it might not work great. And that's why they Cricut is saying that they're guaranteeing results with their products because they've tested these extensively. So you're going to have to just it's going to be at your own risk. OK, so just keep that in mind. And if it doesn't work, it's not because infusible ink is a problem. It's because there's an issue with the material itself. For example, I know that T-shirts are made differently and they're woven differently. And the, the way that they're woven will make a difference when you transfer the infusible ink. Uh, Rhonda says, can we use the heat tape or, or does it have to be uh, infusible heat? Oh, can we use other heat tape? I don't know, Rhonda. I'd have to try. Um, but this is a, there's a lot on here. So I don't see any issue with just using what Cricut is providing. Chances are you could, but again, I haven't tried, so I don't know, but it's a good question. Let's see. I'm looking to see if there's any other questions. How about Nancy's asked about pressure? No pressure for the coasters. When you do the t-shirts and tote bags, you have light pressure, which means one hand. That's it. So other than that, there's no pressure for the coasters. You just let it sit there, which is good because that's like, you know, four minutes. <laughs> um, okay, I'm just scrolling up to see if there's more questions that I missed from before. Awesome. I do see Miranda here. Uh, so thank you so much, Grandy and Sarah and Miranda for helping me. Everybody, please thank them. They are amazing. And I am so grateful to have them on my team. Greg too, but he's sitting in the room. So... Hopefully he knows how much I appreciate him already. He, he, he waved at me. <laughs> he smiled at me. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. Debbie asks, is butcher paper the same as parchment? I thought butcher paper had more of a waterproof finish on one side. So butcher paper is not the same as parchment paper. So you do want to use butcher paper. Uh, you can get a huge roll of this off of Amazon for very little money. I have a link to that in my post about what do you really need to get started with Cricut infusible ink. So like if you get that, you'll be set for a really long time and it doesn't cost much. So you never need to worry about it again. So don't use something else. Use what they suggest unless you're willing to experiment and don't mind mistakes, in which case do whatever you want. With. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. So if you guys have more questions, let me know. This is, oops, I just moved my cord. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. <laughs> I guess we'll find out if I messed it up. <laughs> My chair bumped the cord just now. Um, okay, so we're going to take this off when it beeps, and then we're going to let it cool. So I'll remember, I'll just lift up straight like this, and then we can go ahead and remove the butcher paper right away. So I have my handy-dandy um, heat infrared thermometer that we used last time when we did this so that we can keep an eye on when it cools down. In my experience at this point, we can, uh, right, so right now it is at 357 um, in the center and uh, 320 at the edges. The edges will cool much faster than the center. In my experience, when it gets to like 180 in the center, it's fine. So that's what I did this one for, this, this other watercolor one, and obviously that turned out great, so. So we'll wait until it's cooled off. So the reason why it's really important to wait for it to cool off is because when we heat the infusible inks, they turn to gas and they infuse themselves into the coaster. Okay, so they, they become a gas and they move into the coaster or into the fabric of you know what you're doing. And then as they cool off, they solidify. So we need to wait until they've cooled off and solidified before we start touching and moving things. Otherwise, we can get like weird ghosting things or like kind of like what, what might look like smears or not as vibrant of an effect that we're looking for. So that's why it's important. Now, a couple people asked me, could you just stick this into the refrigerator or the freezer? And I wouldn't want to move this right now. We want to keep this totally stationary while it is cooling down. So I would not do that. You are, of course, welcome to try it if you want, but I won't be because I'm pretty sure that will result in a problem. 
this needs to stay perfectly still while it's cooling off. Okay, so it looks like comments are stalled again. Sorry, guys. Hopefully the video is working okay tonight. We're not seeing any issues on our end with bandwidth. Um, so hopefully that's okay. Let's see what we're at. 303. But if you have questions, let me know. And um, members of my team could put them into Slack so we can, I can check over there. I'll just pop over there right now to see if there's any questions. Let's see. Okay, um, so I think I answered all of those that I see up there. Yes, I think I see, but if, I'm watching for new questions. And I think that I want, I'm really eager to get some of the square coasters, um, just because I, these are just so cool. They're just, they're so smooth. It, 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 I mean, this is not like anything that we've normally done on our, with our crickets before, right? Where we normally have to cut something out and then apply it to a surface and there's always going to be an edge right with that something like that but with this it's like it was um like in this case because it's ceramic it's almost like it was gla painted and then the glazed over it or something i mean i'm no i'm no expert in ceramics i wish my mom was here my mom is both a watercolor artist and a potter so she could tell me all of this i should have had her come in here i should have thought of that um Sarah asks, oh, there's a question here. Sorry. So does it matter which side of the butcher paper you used? Nope. There's no difference. They're the same. It's, there's no, they're not different on one side or the other. It's just the same. So that does not matter what side of the paper you use. And there's another question here is whether I will have a tutorial on the website later. So I will put this video, I will edit it, edit out the parts that are, um, you know, me talking too much. <laughs> Or us waiting for this to cool down because we don't have to wait so long. We're at 268 right now. And I will put this up onto YouTube and this will be the tutorial. And then if you want, I can certainly write the directions up. If you if you want, let me know. If you'd like to see the directions written up, I will. But like last week when I did our video, I just put it up on YouTube. So we'd always have a permanent record of this. There's always a replay of these videos. Always. Okay. That's, that's it. Very carefully. I don't want to accidentally move anything. Okay, so we are at 261, so I'm going to wait till we get to 180. And like typically, like last time, I think it took about five minutes, I'd say, for um, this to cool down enough. Yeah, and so for those who are just joining us and wondering what the heck we're doing, I am actually taking in Cricut Infusible Ink pens and markers. I only have pens, but you can do this with the markers too. And I am creating watercolors from the inks. And then I uh, used a watercolor brush, this one right here, which is a little wet, a watercolor brush to paint a design like this on. And so right now the design is on the coaster and it's cooling off. We've already, we've applied it with our uh, Easy Press. So it's solidifying right now and cooling down. And when it gets to, 180 we're at 240 right now when it gets to 180 i will take it off and we can see how it works okay and then it was pretty light so if anyone remembers the design looks lighter than this right um when we watercolor it under the paper so yeah so and i'm just using the empty coaster a box so my cricket coasters came in this and i've used all four of them now so I'm just using this to mix my paints in. So all we're doing is just putting a little bit of the ink in there. So in most of the cases, I just used a pen and I just drew it in there and then put a little, just a little bit of water. In this case, where you can see all of this green, we actually took the end off the green marker, this marker, and I showed how to do it in the video, and we squeezed some of the ink there. So now we have lots of ink if we wanted to do a bigger project. When you're doing a small project like the coaster, you don't need to do that. You can just literally just take the pen and draw in it to release the ink into the bottom of this and then use a little bit of water to make a watercolor. So that's how that works for anyone who is curious. And it's really cool. I mean, I think it's really fun to do new and different things with the tools that we have. And I'm really excited about the Crooked Infusible Ink because the way it transfers is just amazing. It's just so cool. It's, it's how it infuses into the coaster like this. And yeah, 
Miranda um, says, can you, you reuse the pens afterwards? Yeah. What do you mean reuse the pens? So you mean like if you took some ink out, would the pen still work? If that's the question, then yes. I've taken ink out of all these pens and they all still work. You just stick the ink, the little ink um, cartridge back in and you put the cap back on and that's it. There's nothing more to it than that. It's not, um, you know, anything complicated. And uh, if you want to see how I did that, just watch the replay. So I don't want to mess anything up right now on this, but I just took this cap off and popped out the cartridge and squeezed a little bit of the ink into the tray right here and then used the paintbrush to paint it. And the more water you add, the more it's going to like be diluted, right? So you get to choose how much you want. And of course you don't have to do it this way. You can literally just draw on your laser copy paper with a pen and let me show you. So last week, was it last week? Yeah, we did these two coasters. So last Wednesday night. So we used the Cricut to draw this mandala and then I colored it in and then we transferred it to the coaster. Isn't that awesome guys? Look at that, isn't that cool? So that is using the Cricut to draw something and then color it in by hand. And then this one, we just made by hand just drawing. So I had to do put the summer in, I had to draw the summer backwards, but that was fine. It wasn't that big of a deal. Um, and it turned out really cute. Right. So you can do all sorts of things like, you know, that you want. And of course, you could also use the transfer sheets and just cut out designs. We're using the transfer sheets. I haven't done that yet. I only had four coasters. So this is what we've done so far. But um, I have tutorials on how to use the transfer sheets to make a cool T-shirt. Um, so hopefully you've seen that or someone could put the link in for us. And. I am today, I, uh, yesterday and today I made a tote bag using the markers or sorry, using the pens and then colored it all in by hand. And it's really awesome. And I am just editing the video now. So that will go onto YouTube when it's ready. So let's check the temperature of this. We're at 190. So we're really close to 180. I mean, I don't know. It's probably okay. We'll just give it a few more seconds. I'm going to check to see if there's any questions. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, can this be used on glass or any other surface? I don't know. I don't think glass is going to be, I don't think glass would work. I'm not sure, but I feel like, I mean, I haven't tried it. I'm going to turn that off. Um, but I feel like that would be, like I wouldn't be able to infuse into the surface of the glass the way that it can ceramic uh, or because this is, this is still a porous surface, right? Or um, it can like fabric. So I suspect it won't work with glass. And there's another question, if the ink gets on your hand or, or clothes, how indelible is it? Well, I'm not gonna test that one, guys. However, I'm sure I'm gonna accidentally test that. So I will let you know and I will add that to my frequently asked questions. I don't want to put ink on my hands right now. I don't know. I don't know whether it would stain your fingers or not. Um, but I mean, I guess that, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to try it because then it'll be a stuck on my fingers. And then I'll have to wait until it wears off to do another tutorial. Cause everyone will be like, why is your finger green? <laughs> um, okay. Any more questions? I don't think so. I think I got everything. Okay. So let's check this. Okay, good. I think it's time for us to take this off. So awesome. So I'm going to just make sure that it's cool enough for me to touch. You don't want to burn our fingers, right? It still feels warm, but it's not hot. So I want to note right now that see how our design is on this white paper. And if we hadn't put this white paper on, you know where our design would be? On our mat right so that's why we're using the paper so let's go ahead and remove this so we're just going to take the tape off the back here um, all right and we're going to flip it over <laughs> that's awesome look at that see guys it's hot <laughs> it is hot so you need to be careful so I'm just hang on to this so this at least on my screen, this actually looks a little bit 
more vibrant in person than it does on the screen, especially like the pinks. But it, it's really very cool. So, and the more ink you use, the more dark, the darker it's going to be. But like, isn't that cool? Isn't it cool that we can do this? This is a better, this is better. I, I spent more time on this one. But hopefully you can see how cool this is and how you can make different effects. And if you had more colors of the markers and pens, which I don't tonight, um, you could blend more colors and make more colors than just pink, purple, and green. Because, well, that's cute, you know. However, these coasters will go together, so that's cool. And by the way, these are supposed to be butterflies, even though they kind of look like weird flowers. They're supposed to be butterflies. You guys see that? Um, trying to get to focus. There we go. So butterflies is what they're supposed to be. So there we go. And I hope that this was cool and gave you some ideas on what you can do um, with the Cricut Infusible Ink Markers for different effects. So again, this was drawn on the Cricut. This was drawn by hand. And these were done using our watercolor, a technique using our watercolor brush, or really just any paintbrush. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Thank you all for joining me tonight. I really appreciate you guys being so much fun to show you how to do these projects. I really, really enjoy it. And remember, we are having a giveaway contest right now. We're having a summer maker giveaway. Um, we're giving away a Cricut Maker and an Easy Press 2 and a bundle of infusible ink products and some Cricut Coach playbooks. And the way that you enter is to go over to my website and it's a summer maker giveaway, right? Hopefully a member of my team will drop the link in here for us as well. And there's lots of different ways to enter. You can actually enter every day by doing various things. And one of the ways that you can enter is to use, um, to type in the word of the day, which I say in a video. Um, and so today's word of the day is, can you guess, can you guess? It's watercolor. So today's word of the day is watercolor. Okay, so if you go on over to jennifermaker.com and look for the Summer Maker giveaway, you can enter to win the contest and the word of the day is watercolor. And there's lots of other ways too, like liking and sharing and commenting on my videos, subscribing to me on YouTube, following me on Facebook, all of those sorts of things. All right, well, I think that this was awesome and fun. If you have questions when you're watching the replay later on or you think of things, just let, let me know what it is. You can leave your com comment here on the video, or you can come to our Facebook group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. It is an awesome group full of really, really creative people who are learning their crickets or already know and are willing to help other people make really cool things. All right. I think that's it. Thank you for joining me. Next week's video is going to be on Tuesday night instead of Wednesday night because I'm have somewhere to go on Wednesday night, but we're going to do, we're planning to do this every week um, for the, you know, for the foreseeable future um, during the week. Because normally I put my big tutorial videos out on the weekends and then we wanted to have some live videos during the week to sort of bridge the gap and do fun things like this. And I think our plan for next week is to try different, different blanks for infusible ink um, because Cricut doesn't make all of the blanks that we want, right? So we're going to, I've ordered a bunch of things on Amazon and we're just going to try with um, our, our, our haul. <laughs> we're going to go to Michael's on Friday morning, two days from now and get like everything for infusible ink. Greg was just talking to me about it. He's like, he told me, are you looking forward to going to Michael's and buying all the infusible ink stuff? And I was like, yeah, we're going to just fill up that cart. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to show you, we're going to try different things. And I can tell you right now, some will be, awesome and some probably will fail and that's okay that's that's why we test and experiment things all right thank you for joining me tonight it's always a pleasure to share things with you i hope that you have a lovely evening and i will talk to you next week bye